Hi, welcome to part three of the session on uh, Oracle Functions. My name is KD. I'm part of the product team in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. If you have not seen the first two parts, uh, it would be uh, useful for you to watch uh, those sessions first or those parts first. Uh, we looked at uh, what is uh, serverless computing, category of cloud computing. We looked at uh, functions as a service and how it's useful. We talked about uh, Oracle functions and uh, uh, why do we need it and uh, some of its uh, key features. Uh, we talked about how it's based on the open source uh, FN project and you can uh, run it anywhere, whether on your laptop, in your data centers, on Oracle Cloud, or actually in any other cloud as well. Uh, we looked at uh, the overview of how a function can be uh, deployed and uh, uh, and then invoked. Uh, we looked at the function triggers, uh, points, and how it's integrated in the OCI ecosystem. We discussed the function development kits and the uh, five languages that are first-class citizens, but you can uh, uh, use any languages as long as you can... Uh, uh, create a Docker container, you can run it with uh, functions. Uh, we looked at the core concepts of uh, what applications are, uh, what actual functions are, and we talked about uh, invoking the functions, uh, deploying the file, you know, after deploying, you invoke the function, and uh, how you can trigger uh, these functions in the Oracle function service. <clears throat> we looked at the IAM policies you need. Uh, we uh, went over uh, the steps required to deploy a function and then what happens uh, under the hood when you actually invoke a function. Uh, and finally, there are uh, four different metrics that are uh, shown to you via uh, OCI console. We will start this session by looking at uh, some of the use cases that you can execute using Oracle Functions. Uh, and then we will also look at a demo. <coughs> uh, a succinct way of saying the potential use cases and functions is uh, anywhere you need to run code in response to certain events happening is a good potential use case for using Oracle functions. <coughs> this could be anywhere from uh, uh, real-time uh, file and stream processing to uh, DevOps and batch processing workloads, uh, web, mobile, IoT, backend, uh, working in conjunction with API gateways is another set of use cases. And actually, uh, for integrating uh, uh, event-driven uh, cloud services, it can act as a, as a glue between different cloud services. Uh, rather than go into all these categories uh, separately, I'm going to uh, give you some examples but you know let's start with the uh, glue cloud uh, glue uh, service uh, acting as glue uh, being the use case uh, in this case you know if you have uh, different kinds of uh, cloud services and these could be infrastructure platform uh, and software as a service uh, type of uh, cloud offerings uh, this could be in, in a single cloud provider like OCI or actually across multiple cloud providers as well. Any Anytime you want these uh, uh, different systems, uh, you know, you can think of these as different systems, uh, to uh, integrate with each other in an asynchronous manner uh, and uh, this sort of uh, decoupling and asynchronous uh, mode of communication is important uh, if you want to scale and work well in a distributed uh, system. So anywhere you have a scenario like this, uh, you can um, uh, use functions, uh, invoke your functions, for example, in response to certain events happening in, in one kind of cloud service, uh, leading to a change or a response happening in a different kind of cloud service. And you can use different permutations and, and combinations of these services, as you can imagine. Uh, another example use case would be uh, to implement uh, infrastructure event-driven architectures uh, using Oracle Functions. Uh, anytime um, uh, something happens, some resource in OCI changes, uh, let's say an autonomous transaction processing database or a, or a compute service coming up or storage, uh, block storage or object storage or notifications is another 
thing integrated very nicely with Oracle uh, events uh, or OCI events and networking is not uh, uh, networking resources can also trigger events uh, I encourage you to look at the events presentation I've recorded um, uh, some uh, a session on uh, OCI event service so you'll, you can learn more about this over there but these events can actually as as we uh, discussed earlier these events can trigger uh, functions and uh, these functions getting triggered can then act on these events happening all right so and examples uh, would be uh, you know uh, security operations kind of uh, things for example you provision a, an OCI compute instance uh, when this instance is provisioned uh, that would trigger an event and that event would trigger a function and that function would have the code that would be able to uh, go into your compute instance and uh, or into your OCI environment and check if uh, uh, if the instance complies with security policies or not and if not it can uh, take action like even terminating the instance. Uh, you can uh, do uh, network security analysis kind of use cases. In this case you have uh, your network access logs in an object store bucket when data is put in there that can trigger a function this function can uh, can now trigger a function uh, sorry this function can now uh, take the logs in the object storage bucket and and then uh, process them or uh, uh, send them to uh, an analysis tool um, you, or for example, you can actually integrate a third-party solution like Splunk so that these logs are sent into um, into Splunk or you could uh, use any other analysis tool as well. The key thing here is uh, there is no uh, developer intervention. This is all automated. You don't have to babysit this. Uh, you know, this is happening uh, uh, on the basis of, of an event happening and the function is, is doing the integration and, and some pre-processing if you want it. Um, another uh, example uh, that uh, I want to talk about is, uh, you know, again, automation is the is a key part or a key point here. Uh, in this example, we have a autonomous transaction processing uh, database instance coming up in OCI, uh, and this uh, creation, uh, uh, this event of uh, creating the instance. Uh, triggers OCI events uh, and OCI events uh, you you are able to uh, filter on on these uh, uh, state changes in the resources and write rules and the rules could invoke uh, um, an action uh, and these actions could be triggering a function in Oracle functions and this function can do a few things. It can for example uh, run scripts to create schemas or import uh, uh, data into your uh, ETP instance. Uh, you know you can also uh, act on this uh, uh, event to send notifications uh, to your developers by email. Uh, so this is another example. And now let me uh, give you uh, a demo uh, of uh, uh, of the Oracle Functions service in action. In this demo, what I'm going to uh, do is uh, I have a function, this is uh, pre-baked uh, cooking show style uh, and in this demo uh, the function is already deployed and invoked. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, show the automation piece. Uh, in this uh, we will provision an OCI instance. When this instance uh, uh, comes up it's going to invoke the uh, function and this function is actually going to create a new object storage bucket uh, in OCI and when the instance uh, this bucket can be used for uh, uh, things like uh, uh, putting the uh, logs for applications running on that OCI uh, instance and uh, when you uh, terminate that uh, instance the function is going to get invoked again uh, and it's then going to uh, delete uh, the, the object storage bucket that was created. Just an example that highlights the automation piece. Uh, so let's look at some of those components. I've logged into my OCI console. 
uh, let me first show you that uh, in my you know I, I'll be working in the compartment called app and demo I just have one bucket in it that I use for something else but there is uh, just this single bucket so let me start by actually uh, launching an instance uh, you see that I have the compartment set up I don't have any running instances in here I have a few that are already terminated uh, but you know for the purpose of this uh, uh, demo let me call this as uh, instance dash fn demo uh, and this uh, I don't really care about uh, uh, much of the configuration details in fact I don't even need to because I'm going to terminate this instance as soon as it comes up I don't even need to add SSH key etc but what essentially I did is I uh, launched uh, an instance when I launched the instance uh, uh, this was uh, actually launched in a VCN that I had already created with the subnet where I want the uh, functions to run right uh, so let's see what happens so I have uh, this instance now let me actually open uh, new tabs uh, this is my object store bucket again there is only one bucket and finally I want to let's see at, uh, how the uh, function it service itself is configured under developer services we have uh, the functions console on functions console you see that I have a application in the in the last video I showed how to create a new application etc but you know this is the application I already have in place it has a function called uh, demo function uh, this uh, function shows some metrics there is nothing that uh, happened uh, recently you know these are all old events but these are the four different type of uh, metrics that you can monitor using the console uh, so when uh, the function itself is invoked you would see an invocation you would see another uh, data point uh, show up here and when the function executes then the duration thing comes in hopefully we don't see any throttles or errors uh, but let's see what happened to my uh, instance uh, all right looks like the uh, instance uh, just came up or it's uh, coming up uh, hopefully if all goes uh, well uh, we would see uh, the function getting uh, invoked all right so I just saw this uh, function uh, was invoked uh, and uh, this uh, uh, shows in millisecond the duration now let's go back to this uh, bucket and you will see that the instance dash f and demo uh, bucket was was uh, <clears throat> just created because uh, the function uh, uh, had had uh, um, made the api call to create this bucket let me just uh, uh, terminate uh, this instance uh, and when this instance uh, termination event uh, finishes we would uh, uh, then have um, the object storage uh, bucket uh, would get uh, uh, would get deleted uh, let me uh, uh, summarize this part right now while this action is taking place but essentially what we discussed here is uh, some of the uh, use cases uh, that are good for the Oracle function service. It's a key part of the automation story, in a, especially in a distributed kind of setup in which you have multiple systems all trying to uh, coordinate. Uh, this can act as a good uh, glue service kind of thing, uh, you know, an event in one part of the system, and this system could be any infrastructure platform or software as a service kind of service uh, across one or multiple providers uh, this function an event can invoke a function and that function can can do some processing or, or uh, cause a response to happen in the second part of the system uh, you can do batch kind of uh, workloads uh, using uh, functions uh, the notion there is you can trigger the function using the HTTPS endpoint in a uh, at a specific uh, time during the day 
and you can carry out your batch processing uh, things uh, using uh, this this function and you only pay for the duration that the function is running you don't have to have your uh, virtual machine or bare metal machine running at all times so so for batch processing it's a good use case uh, you can use it to automate a lot of the actions uh, like uh, uh, you know setting up your instance when it comes up the ATP instance example we had we can also do uh, checking for uh, security uh, automatically when when a developer in your tenancy launches something you can make sure that it complies with your uh, uh, security posture that's just another example you can do things like uh, automated file processing uh, some image cutting loaded into an uh, OCI object storage bucket can invoke uh, uh, an event and subsequently a function that can work on that, that can process that image, create a thumb node, thumbnail, etc. You could do video processing, etc. with it. Uh, all right, so while we were summarizing, we see that uh, this bucket uh, has now been uh, uh, deleted because the instance was terminated. And if we refresh it, uh, we would see that the function was created, the invoked the second time uh, when the instance was terminated. Let me wrap this up uh, and I would actually record another part uh, in which I am going to uh, show you step by step on how do you set up uh, your development environment for the Oracle function service. Thanks.